In Unity C Sharp programming, there are many not well known and useful features that will make your life a lot easier. They may help you to escape the if hell, solve hard problems easily, as well as optimize and shorten your code. Now reference exceptions in Unity are very common, and the way that you can prevent them is just to do a if check if the class or the object is not equal to null. So in this scenario, we are trying to call a function move in the character controller class. But there is also a lot shorter way to write it, which is just to write the class that you want to access. Then to check if it is null, you can just write question mark and then the function that you want to run. And this works with pretty much any nullable type. Let me show you another way that you can shorten your code quite a lot, which is for example when you have a boolean and based on the boolean you are deciding to which value you should set a variable. In this case, if the player is jumping, the jump velocity should be 10, otherwise it should be 0. You can see that the shorter way is really short, just one line, so we are setting the jump velocity based on if the is jumping is true, in this case we are setting it to 10, otherwise if it is false, we are setting it to 0. This obviously works with any other data types, so we can have the jump velocity as vector free and just write it there. If you have just a simple if statement in which we have just one line of code that should run, we can also simplify this. So now we have it all just on one line and without the query brackets. This is a bit less readable, but since we can run just one line of code based on the condition, it is quite fine to have it just on one line. If you want to take full advantage of Unity, you should definitely know about all of the functions that are included inside the mono behavior, such as the awake function, which is being triggered just once for the first time that we either add the script to an object or for the first time that we set it to active. On enable, on the other hand, can be triggered multiple times when we are just setting the object to active. Star function is being called only once for the first time that we add the component on the object and is also called before the update. Fixed update is being called 50 times per second and it is being used mostly for physics. Update is called every frame, late update is called after update, on disable is called when again we disable the script and on destroy is called when we either destroy the script or the object with it. There are also many other functions that you probably know of, such as the on trigger enter and on collision enter, which allow us to detect collisions. As we are talking about the collisions and the triggers, what you will often need to do is to compare the tag of the object with which you have collided. In this case, you may just compare it as usual, but there is actually a better way, which is to use the compare tag function, which is just a bit more optimized. Often, when you collide with some object, you also want to get some component from it and save it into a variable. In this case, you can see that the code is quite long and we are using the get component twice, which is not really effective. So instead, what we can do is to use the try get component function, which is going to return a true if it got the component and false if it didn't. This part can actually be omitted. And in the parameters, we can see that we have a out variable, which is already going to save the component into the variable. So then we can just access the variable and do anything with it we want. As we are talking about the out parameters of the functions, normal functions allow you to return just one variable, which sometimes is not enough. So what you can do is that you can just create a void if you want and then you can specify all of the parameters that you want to be as the output parameters just with the out keyword, then in the function you can set them and you will be able to access them once you call the function the same way that we have done it with the try get component. Let's say that we have a function that should be constantly repeating. Maybe we have a server and we need to send a tick to it every let's say 10 seconds or we have some spawner and so on. So normally what we would need to do would be to create a coroutine with a while loop, make it run let's say every 2 seconds and then call the function inside of it. But this is quite long. Instead, we can use the function invoke repeating where we need to specify the method name and the only con is that it has to be a string so we cannot input any parameters. Then we can specify the time when it should start and how often it should trigger. As we are talking about the time, let's say that after 2 seconds as we start the game, we want to destroy this current game object, so the normal way would again be creating a coroutine. But the destroy function already has this built in, so we can just specify the delay as for when we should destroy it and that's really all that we need. One more useful function which is not really about destroying, it is about not destroying. This one you can call it on any object and what this means is that it is kind of outside of the scene, so when you actually turn the scene off or you go to another scene, the object will still stay active. So this is usually used for some important objects, some network managers or maybe a player when he wants to transfer to a different scene so that it doesn't get deleted. 
And I cannot forget to mention the MathF library, in which we have ton of options as when it comes to some mathematical functions. We can clamp the values, we can do absolute values, use cosinus, sinus, do logarithm and much more. The one that I use most often is the lerp function, which is just going to linearly interpolate between two values based on the time. And one function that I would definitely not expect inside of the mathematics library is the Perlin noise, which just generates 2D noise that you can use, let's say, when generating a terrain or some cave system and much more. And many of the other classes have their own functions, such as the vector3 can easily calculate a distance between two vectors, which is really useful, and we can also lerp between two vectors. On the transform, we can use transform point, which is going to transform position from local space to world space. We also can use look at, which is just going to look the transform in a certain direction. And there's really a ton of functions that you can go through. If you are unsure about how you could find all of these different functions, then you can just hover your mouse over one of the types, click let's say on the transform, and it is going to show you all of the properties and also the functions that the transform has. And if you are looking for how you can make the scripts in the inspector look a bit better, so maybe add some sliders, some headers, some additional context buttons, then it is really simple just by adding few attributes. For example, for the header, you can just add the header attribute. You can easily just add some space between all of these variables. You can add some tooltips. You can make some sliders using the range attribute. Or you can add some context menus, which are going to call some functions when you actually select it in the script. And if you are looking for how you can tidy up the code a little bit, you can do this using the regions. So write hashtag region, then give it some name. So in my case, this part can be for variables. And also don't forget to end the region. And then you will see that you have this little minus icon so that you can just contract this part. And we can see it in this part we have variables. If I want, I can expand it and see everything that's inside. I have a few more things that I want to mention. The first one is the var keyword, which stands for variable. And you use it when you are just lazy and don't want to define the type for the variable or you are not sure what the variable type will be. So in this case, we are just defining a var health. And to it, I can assign really anything I want. I can assign integer, I can assign string or boolean, everything works. Let's now take a look at casting, which can be used, for example, when you are adding two different value types together, but obviously they cannot be totally different. You cannot be adding string to an integer, but if you are adding just, let's say, a vector three to a vector two, and you want the output to be vector two, you can just cast the vector three as a vector two, just by writing it into these parentheses. And the same thing for when you want to get a integer from a float, you can just cast it as a integer. And one more kind of random thing that I want to mention are hash codes, where each of the objects or components and so on has its own unique hash code. I found it useful when I had a game where I had some fruits that were just dropping and I could combine them together. And when you combine those two fruits together, one new fruit should appear. But obviously, as the on trigger enter logic was running on both of these fruits, every time there would appear two new fruits and not just one. So in this case, if you want just one of these objects to run certain code, you can just compare their hash codes. And one last thing, if you are lazy to be creating a variable for your camera, you can just use camera.main, which will get you the camera in your scene which has assigned the main camera tag. Because you always need to assign the tag, I don't really like using this one, because you can get some no reference exception, but it is definitely an option on how you can get the camera. This is just part of all of the useful c -sharp features that are specifically in Unity, so if you can think of any other useful features that not many people know about, you can definitely let me know down in the comments. And I'm also interested in how many of these did you know, so you can also let me know. If you are looking for some game developer friends or you just want help from someone, take a look at my Discord where there is a great community of game developers. And if you want to financially support me and take a look at some of the extra videos that I make, you can take a look at my Patreon, where I have recently released the second video, which is about learning effectively. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp, or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.